From DS Media Studios in Tema, Ghana, this is Two Peswas. Two Peswas is a weekly podcast where we cover a range of topics, from buzzing media headlines to music to highlights from the week. Each episode is co hosted by myself, Peaches, and Eddie. Episode three, and we are rolling. <laughs> Hello, everyone out there. Thank you for joining us once again. Um, uh, it's been, as usual, a wonderful first two episodes and hearing back from everyone. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Keep keep them likes coming. Keep them follows coming. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't listen. Share, like. Share if you like it. <laughs> tell somebody else who might. Um, I have to announce that I'm feeling quite under the weather today, so excuse my voice. And if you hear some funny cuts in there, it's because I had to run away and sneeze and come back. <laughs> so please bear with me today. Right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, should we just yeah let's, let's yeah let's okay. get into it. Yeah. Okay, so in the news, um, I saw a headline which said, uh, "Soundproof churches or mosques, or or do you shut them down?" And this was, I think, uh, in relation to Nigeria, mm. but then it could well apply to Ghana. So um, I'm just saying that before anyone comes for comes comes for me for being antichrist, please, I'm not the antichrist. <laughs> this is this is just common sense. Um, some of our churches are just too loud. Um, you have your normal. You know, back in the day, you have your normal Sunday service, and then that's it. Mm-hmm. The, rest, the rest for the rest of the week. But now it's sort of like every day there's, yes. a, there's an event at the church. There's something going on, and these churches are going on and on till four a.m. in the morning, till five a.m. in the morning. And it's not fair, especially if the church is situated near a residential area. People have to go to work. Mm-hmm. People have to sleep. So if you're a church, there's no need for you to be shouting at the top of your voice. <laughs> and I just want to ask people, when you go ask your father or your mother for something, do you shout at them? <laughs> you don't shout at them. So there's no reason for you to be shouting at God. There's absolutely no reason. <laughs> be quiet. He'll hear you and, and things will, be, will, be, will get done. The, and and I, I really think there needs to be a law really about this. That I think there is, you know. There, oh, we there do, is? One, there are EPA regulations that right. cover noise pollution in Ghana. But so, nobody follows these uh-huh. laws. Obviously. I mean, if you're uh, enough of an ogre in your personal life, you can go and mm. tell, like, whether the police or whatever it is, yeah, yeah. and they will come and tell the church to... But, but if you're a regular citizen, nobody will mind you right. kind of thing. I, I think it's really not fair. Like, as a church, you should know better. It's not fair for on other people, for them to be hearing your noise all the time. Yes, it's noise. At the end of the day, you're worshipping God, you're worshipping whoever you believe in, but it's noise. You need to be considerate of other people. Mm-hmm. So if you're a church and you're listening, please tone down your levels. Other people want to sleep. Other people have things. Other people have things to do. Right. So The other know. thing is that uh, I think what, as usual, our zoning regulations mm. are really terrible. Yeah. Because churches should not technically be able to be situated in residential That's areas the in the first place. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, that now because they don't observe proper zoning laws, now you have mega churches in your neighborhood and yeah. they're shouting all day and night. And mm-hmm. if you go and ask them to talk, pipe down, they'll say, we, we've, we've had a devil in our midst. I know. <laughs> See, that, and that's not fair. That's, that's really not fair. Because then you try to justify that anybody who comes to say anything against you is the devil, mm-hmm. which is not right. <laughs> yeah, it's not right. It's really not. So please, please, let's be, let's be aware of, of those kind of things. Yeah. 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 Okay. So for my in the week, and I'm really sad that I'm sick because I, this was one of my super pet peeves, and <laughs> I had planned to go on a whole rant oh about boy. this, you and now I don't go. have the energy. Aww. I just don't. <laughs> but in the news again this week is kunkum baja. Okay. Oh, Lord. All right. So for those of you who don't know what kunkum baja is, it is a Indian soap opera. <laughs> Which, for some inexplicable reason, actually, there is an explicable reason, but there isn't really. It's the most popular television show in the country at the moment. Oh, it is. Oh, oh by I far. Would, I wouldn't know. Oh, Lord. So it's on UTV. Now, UTV is, I guess, the first uh, Ghanaian language television station we have. So they have, you know, they're blowing everybody else out of the water <laughs> in terms of viewership as well. Okay. And Kunkum Baja is their, like, flagship programming, right. which. Be, I mean, really, why? <laughs> so it's dubbed in tree, and 
It's on air. Now, first of all, I feel like I have I like a personal vendetta against Kunkumbaja, okay? <laughs> Specifically because they show it during the day around, I don't know, I feel like it's on at 3 o'clock or something right, like that. Right. And if you tell me that that show is responsible for like a 40% reduction in productivity of Ghanaians, <laughs> I would absolutely believe wow, you. Must be because famous. every hairdresser I've been to, my nail place, mm. uh, you go to a shop, whatever it is, they're literally sitting there hypnotized and glued to that damn kunkumbaja and they won't even mind you. Like, you're trying to get served. That's that's serious. The other day, I went to get my um, tire pumped up and this grown-ass 50-year-old man, (laughs) like, he had to pause between the two tires to get in a few minutes of kunkumbaja. So I was even wondering how his TV got electricity. I was like, where is the (laughs) electricity coming from? And he had put it in some box. And he was like holding the you know thing in one hand and mm. was just like I was like boss tell him percent the call why adding so the first time so for that alone that we are sitting here in Ghana and you know whatever the case is India is I don't okay I don't like to say it's, it's technically a developing well maybe it's an emerging nation at okay. this point yeah, right. but there is no reason why our Ghanaian language, you know, you say your mandate is to provide entertainment for, you know, Ghanaians. Ghanaians, yeah. And then you don't go and develop, like, how hard is it to develop your own exactly. soap opera? You go and get this, this Indian of, yeah, thing and yeah, you just yeah. dub it in tree. Mm-hmm. And it's so, like, it, so I had never actually watched it. Mm. I'd, I'd heard about it and used it as a cultural reference before I ever saw it, the mm. thing. And I went and I watched, and it's such, like, the cognitive dissonance, okay, because you're sitting there and these people are in these saris mm. and whatever, and then they're like, I'm a set, yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> no, what's a pra- praba or whatever. Oh, oh no. and I'll say a call. I'm like, oh, I can't, I'm going, yeah, I'm so. going mad. It will drive me mad. Mm. I don't know how people watch it for that alone. And then they are doing their Hindu rituals and stuff. And I'm like, how are you connect? Like, how do you relate to anything that's happening here? And like, I'm sure some of the translations are totally off. Oh, right? I I'm hear sure they, they are. They yeah, just they say whatever. Just say, yeah, say whatever. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, Ghanaians will listen. So, so cool. now, that aside, this is what they were actually doing in the news. Right. The first one that pissed me off was... Uh, the second lady, Samira Boumia, a.k.a. Girl Crush, a.k.a. Mm. Bay, mm. went on a trip to India <gasps> and went to visit <gasps> with the cast of Kung Kung Baja. What? So I'm just like, so why are we cheapening ourselves like oh this? And I went on Google yesterday just to see. Mm. And this Kung Kung Baja is not... The only places that are hyping it is literally Ghana. Of it's course. like a regular... Ch- I mean, it's a show in India. Mm. It is not like... Oh. It's just a show, right? That people watch or whatever. It's, it's depressing. It's, For me, this kind of thing... Literally. Like, they're depressing. We're like, elevating why? regular ass Indian <sighs> television. So the second lady went to visit them or they visited with her. I was like, why? Like, why? why? Don't we have any other things that we could focus on? Is this, is this like, national priority? Like, really? Let me tell you. Oh. So, the currently the most popular sh- TV show in the whole world, mm. right, is Game of Thrones. Woo-hoo! Yes, Game I know. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it officially displaced <laughs> The Walking Dead, okay? Okay. Now, first of all, I've never heard uh, um, Barack Obama or Donald Trump went to visit the mm. cast of Game of Thrones. Like, right. nobody... It's not like they're just they're still just guys on TV. Like how exactly. why would you lower yourself to that level that you've elevated some TV people to this level? But that's what we do. We take things which are not ours and then sort of hype them. We we do this. All the all the rice we export, for example, we could put our you know adverts out and it's 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 a thing we do. And it's so unfortunate. And then the second issue now is that so now the Kunkum Badger people are here in Ghana oh. on tour. Okay, so they were at Kumasi Stadium the other day. You should have seen the people's faces. It's like they'd seen God or something. I was like, Jeez. what is... I was so upset and so embarrassed. Oh, it's embarrassing! And then they had a dinner at Golden Tulip, and the tickets were 600 CDs. 600 CDs. So what is that in dollars now? Like about maybe 100, 100 and just something. About 100, in. just under 100 bucks. For what? 
Oh, I cry for my Again, people. if the cast of Game of Thrones showed up here, I wouldn't pay more than 50 Ghana <laughs> to see them. And that's only if Jason Momoa is coming, like, because yeah. I just want to touch his chest. <laughs> but apart from, like, I really... 600 CDs for them. No, 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 no. This is... This is I'm just... And, you know, I remember a couple of years ago, mm. people... So... I think it was Van Vicker was went to, <laughs> went to premiere some movie in the states or something like right. that, and he was charging five or ten dollars to take pictures with mm-hmm. him. You should have seen how people insulted him. <laughs> oh, you know how Ghanaians can be. The way they he finished him rude. online, uh, they just destroyed the boy. Like who, now, who, oh, God. five dollars. Who told him he's worth five dollars? <laughs> but these. Kunkum Baja, regular ass people. Like the equivalent of Majid Michel in India has not is not is not these guys. This is depressing. They're number one stars and stuff. I mean, can we not can we just Let's respect some Let's our own it. products and yeah, elevate our own exactly. a bit? Exactly. My God. Out there. Why do we have to do this? And why? the show is trash too. It's one of those <laughs> I shows watch where this so high, like I wouldn't No, mean. like even the few cl- it's one of those type of shows where the intrigue is because they ask you a mm. question mm. and then the girl will just stand there. <laughs> So at one point I asked my mom, my mom one day I was like ah, is she mute or like is she mm-hmm. de- like she can't speak or like oh she can't speak I was like so like and then they'll cut to the next day like and that's the built up drama they ask you why did you steal the thing oh my God. and instead of just saying I didn't then you're like and then there's this dramatic music I'm like just answer no the substance. question like nothing it is hot ass garbage. This is terrible. And we've literally, you should go, if you go online, you'll see the pictures yeah, and you'll just I'll be embarrassed for the rest of your life. Can, let's stop it. Like stop we embarrass it. ourselves on a, on a daily basis. Like, oh, there's always something. Oh, Ghanaians, oh, Ghanaians. And then I'm thinking, like, Indians are not exactly known for being racially sensitive, okay? They're busy in India attacking black people That's and calling the thing, them monkeys. But we don't, we and, forget that. Thank you. And you're here having elevated these bottom barrel Indian stars to that's, that's uh, right. it really I'm sorry I'm right. ranting yeah, no, that's I'm, okay. I'm done but like ew embarrassing embarrassing it's, it's like a no me. stop mm-hmm. it stop it if you and first of all <laughs> stop watching Kung Kung Bajai. it's brutting your brain really <laughs> go read a book or something my god or if you like watch Efira then if you want to watch, I mean come yeah, on yeah yeah exactly like no don't, don't ah. do that don't do or that. I'll just keep stick with the Nigerian ones at least you can relate closer culturally you see your face in their exactly. face or something yeah how ah. you think people who, who don't respect you no don't, don't, don't do that don't do that. Uh, anyways, yeah, I'm so. sorry. I'm calm down. No, that's all right. That's I'm all right. Calm down. Thanks for that. All right. Okay, so we're going on to song of the week. Yes, I'm always excited because I Are never you? know the songs that you're gonna. You know, I'm just, <laughs> just strange things. So today, my song of the week is from Sina Soul. Oh, I know. Her. I love Sina Soul. Yes. Um, if you are Ghanaian, that you've probably probably heard um, about her. Um, I remember first hearing about her when we went to the Allianz concert. Like, mm-hmm. the first time I heard her, and I was just so, yeah, I was just so, like, wow. Oh, this young girl, she can sing so well. Oh, no, not Beat Freaks, the Metanoia, Metanoia X. Yes, this yes, was her yes, concert, yes, exactly, yeah. Exactly, Metanoia X. And she's, she's wonderful, uh, I mean, singing she live. She stage presence, too. Yeah, like, she, she does. Really... She's, she's, she's so dope. And so my favorite song of hers is Julo. Mm. What she did featuring Manifest. Of, I'm a I'm a <laughs> yeah, so that's a really, really brilliant song. She did it with Manifest. Of course, anything that Manifest does is like, I know, right? Um, Shout out to Manifest. Yeah, so that's that's the song that I really like. It's chill, it's got a relaxed sort of vibe. And the, the beginning sort of reminds me of it like a jazzy sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so it's a beautiful I song. I like it, I like it. I like Sina so she Sina, where are your video at? Why don't you do a video oh, for true. Julo? No, she doesn't. Huh? She didn't do a that's video. True. Mm, that's true. Her, so her EP was it was called Metanoia. All the songs on there. Are good. Oh, There's yeah. another one she did with Walasi, which is also really really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So and she had a song with Kitty, who is like everywhere now. Oh, is he? And it's called Bado, right? Oh, yeah. right. Bado. Yeah, yeah, that's yes, that's Kitty, an, yeah, that's another. Who is blowing awesome. up at the moment? Yeah. So if you can, please go listen to Sina Soul Julo featuring Manifest. Or check out the whole Metanoia exactly. EP. It's, it's brilliant. I think you she's like coming it. out with some new stuff oh, now. Oh, that's brilliant. I'm waiting um, to hear something from her yeah. soon. So. Sina Soul, yeah. Yes. That's what's up with Sina Soul. <laughs> okay, so my song of the week, I don't know, I we're, we're heading into Christmas. I think I'm in a bit of a party mood, so 
my song of the week is... Wait, wait, let me guess. Mariah Carey. That song that always comes... No, in the <laughs> not all I want for Christmas. <laughs> okay, Although okay. I feel like we should do like one Christmas episode. I think. Let's do the next one. Let's, let's do Christmas. Oh, it's too early. Oh, it's too early. Yeah, that's true. Maybe uh, in like a couple of December. weeks. Mm. Yeah, cool, cool. Okay, anyways. <laughs> so my, it's, like a more, it's like a party song. And it's by Major Lazer and DJ... Maforisa, Maforisa, mm. and it's called Particular. Okay. Haven't you, have no. you read it? Please sing it. Let me see. I like your ways in particular. No. Eh, you heard. in particular. Go listen. It's such a oh, dope song. Right. And <laughs> so it's like a collaboration. I guess they picked, um, you know, it was like an African all stars, but then they kind of went to the two biggest music markets. Okay. Um, Nigeria and uh, South Africa. Okay. So again, well, so Diplo, you probably well, Major Laser, you might know they have some big songs. Mm-hmm. Um, they have Run Up with mm-hmm. Nicki Minaj. That's like the big one, and they had a huge song Lean On with Mo. Okay. Uh, Major Laser. Um, and Diplo. So Major Laser is made up of three. It's a trio. It's Diplo, Walshy Fire, and Jillian Air. Now Diplo, okay. people might know as well. Yeah, Diplo I've heard of him. From his work, we worked with MIA back in the day. I think they even dated for a couple of years. Okay. He worked with Azalea Banks. Right. He's worked with Justin Bieber. He actually did a lot of Justin Bieber's last album. Okay. Uh, Purpose, I think it was called, which made it actually decent. And he even have a, he even produced a song for Usher, Climax, which is one right. of my yes, really, really good songs. Like yeah, yeah of the yeah. Usher um, catalog, that's one of the songs I really yeah, yeah. actually like. So Climax is a good song. Yep. Yeah. So Major Lazer featuring DJ Mafarisa, who is uh, a South African DJ, and the song features Nasty C, mm-hmm. who's from South Africa. Ice Prince Zamani, oh, who's from Nigeria, Jidenna, who Oh, Jidenna, I love Jidenna. <laughs> and then Pato Ranking. Oh, Pato Ranking. Yeah, so um, I like to go on tangents a bit. So so Nasty C is like, he's a, he's a kid. I don't, I think if he's 20, I'll be surprised. Right. And he's like, uh, in terms of rap in South Africa, like the new wave now. Hmm. So some of, if you want to check out um, other songs of his, he has, so the song I discovered him on is called Coolest Kid in Africa, and he right. has, it's on there with Davido. Okay. And it's like a cute song, and he has these other, like, hip-hop, you know, if you like that new school hip-hop stuff, mm-hmm. you'll probably like it. Of course, Ice Prince, we mm. should know him from <laughs> Ole Kufi, Le Kufi. Yeah. and then Aboki as yes. well, yes. and then Boss, and so he's on there. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, Jidenna, you know, Mr. Classic Man. Yeah. <laughs> and then Pato Ranking. So I really like Pato Ranking, actually. Um, Me too. Niger- yeah. So he had, well, recently he had Nawash with Becca. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. he had My Woman with, um, what is that called? Uh, what called? Oh, One Day Cole, I think. Yeah. Okay. My Woman, yeah. yeah. And then, of course, he had No Kissing. But that was yeah, with Sakodia. Yeah, Sakodia. yeah. So check out this song. It's a really <laughs> nice vibe, Afri- Afro beat vibe with really good artists on there who are each, you know, doing some great stuff in their own right. Mm. And uh, yeah, just a good time. So that's my song of the week, Particular nice. by Major Lazer and it out. DJ Mafarisa featuring a whole bunch of good ass artists. All right. yeah. Definitely check that out. Yes. Okay. Bye. Okay. So on to the next section. Yes, which is what the F. What the F. So, do you want to go or should I go? You go, let okay. me rest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in my what the F, I saw a headline which said, Mystery Mourner has been crashing funerals for 14 years for free food. 14 years? <laughs> 14 years. <laughs> Uh, she believed that it was her duty to go to every like funeral service. Is this a Ghanaian person? You wait. <laughs> so she's, she believed it was her duty to go, you know, she would, she'd go and her then duty. people would realize her duty. <laughs> and people would realize that she'd go just for the free food. Sometimes she'd, she'd box some of the food away. <laughs> So when I saw the headline, I just said, ha, I laugh in red and black funeral costumes. <laughs> obviously, this is not a Ghanaian headline. And I'm like, this is from the UK. And I'm not trying to make a laugh, like uh, losing a, a relative, a, a, like a laughing stock or anything. But uh, like I said, I knew this headline was not from Ghana. In Ghana, when you have a funeral, it's like a big old party, mm-hmm. like it's a free for all party. Anybody, anyone can come, come get some free food. You might find the love of your life. I mean, that's almost the whole point of the funeral, that's exactly, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it's, it's, and I find it a bit disturbing that people actually go out to funerals just because they know they're going to get free food, mm-hmm. just because they know that uh, they're going to get free booze, and people misbehave. 
I think like funeral should be sort of like a solemn, solemn, solemn event. Bury your dead, do what you have to do, and then go home. I don't feel we should be catering to people. People you don't even know. I like know. people you don't know, you're cooking for them. At the end, you bokka, and then I mean, it's it's. I don't think it's right. I don't. I think, think right. I read something that said we officially spend more on funerals than weddings. In yeah, I believe it. And absolutely, absolutely. And the one thing I find so appalling is that a lot of the times when the people who are like close to passing away, when they are sick, there's nobody there to take care of them. If they need money to go to mm-hmm. the hospital or medicine, there's nobody. But as soon as they die, all these droves of people come from no. Where? I know it's they're really coming for free food. First of all, I mean the whole funeral culture. I could do an entire like probably oh. do a whole two pesos on Ghanaian funeral terrible. culture. It's terrible. It's terrible because your ebusia pain, whatever. They show up weeks to the wedding. You have to feed them. Every oh. time. They say family meeting. I know. And they, they come and week. say all sorts of things oh. you need to do. And then you're like, okay, so what's your contribution? They're like, mm. oh, two hundred CDs. <laughs> I know. And then you've got all the the dancing pall bearers. It's like it's too it's much. Escalating. It's escalating. Much. It's, Let's it's, stop yeah. it. I'm gonna. I think we'll, I'll do a whole separate yeah, two passwords. It's, it's, I really will because I have a lot to get off. Funerals my chest. in Ghana have become like parties. Like people, people actually and go around like, looking for funerals, and like they here. don't even. Talk, you know, okay, you came, your gate crasher. You don't even. You won't even talk in like hushed tones or something in recognition of the fact that mm-hmm. some people literally are yeah. crying and devastated. Yeah. They're like. <laughs> You know, and then come wait for takeaway. Mm, they're like, oh, I didn't get some of that. And they'll be exactly, like, it's like it's so annoying to me. And I, it's <laughs> annoying. When I die, I don't, I don't want all that tam tam. Like, just bury me, and everybody go home, go cook your own food. I'm not here. I'm not here to serve mm. you to cater cater to you. So yeah, that that's it for fitness. Let's 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 try and be a bit reasonable about it. At the end of the day, it's the family who has to. Spawn, who has to pay for all these things? So have a little mercy and, know, and don't right? go to funerals you're not not invited to. Yeah. They don't hear you though. No, no, no it's not like <laughs> like, so. What is this one also? I say? know, I well, know. Yeah, like, I, we're, my going, we're going to socialize. <laughs> what are you talking about? Get a new clothes. Need a sugar that. daddy. Exactly. And stuff. I was told, Kumasi funerals, if you want to. When the, um, is that Asante Hima or whatever yes. recently died? Mm. Hey. Or that Santa Hini's mom, mom or whatever. Yeah, the mom, yeah. You should have seen girls, girls in a crowd. They were like, hey, we're going to the... I'm like, do you know her? Like, where? They're like, listen, that's where you make all your connections, business, personal. I'm oh, like, okay then, sure. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. Mm? It's terrible. All right, so that, that's my bit in, in what, the, what the F. So my what the F, where we're going across... Um, we're going a bit further east... <laughs> Off to Nigeria. Oh boy. <laughs> so in Kaduna State earlier this month, uh, they had, so there was this whole, they, they uh, issued a standardized test for teachers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now the test they, they issued was supposed to be for a class four level. <laughs> so for nine year olds. Mm-hmm. And out of the 33,000 teachers uh, employed by Kaduna State, 22,000 of them failed the test. Okay. So right now there's this whole controversy because they're supposed to be sacked. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first part of the what the F is like, yo. (laughs) (laughs) So I went and... So that was one of the things. Okay. So they said they're sacking 22,000 teachers because they cannot successfully pass a test intended for class four students. Right. So now Hmm. these teachers went on strike that they don't agree. <laughs> They're not going anywhere. <laughs> and then, of course, they riled up, like, public sympathy because right. people were like, oh, what? I mean, how? what do you mean? And blah, blah, blah. So the governor of Kaduna, who is petty goals and messy as hell, okay, <laughs> took to his Twitter page and posted pictures of some of the people's tests Ooh. and what they'd written <laughs> and said, would you let this man teach, teach your child? child. Hey. Exactly. Hot mm. ass mess. So mm. I took the liberty of writing down two of them, just so you see the level right, we're dealing right, with. Okay. Right. So one of the questions was, define cash crops. And somebody wrote, yam. <laughs> <laughs> define, oh, it was like, yam. Oh, and then pepper. Oh, and the pepper, he spelt it P-E-P, pepper. Yam, pepper. Whoa. Next question. I've done it. Then they asked somebody, what are two... <laughs> this one is my favorite. What are two qualities of teaching aids? Mm-hmm. Somebody wrote, stick is a teaching aid. <laughs> it's a teaching aid. Put an S on the end. Book is a teaching aid. <laughs> and it's just... 
downhill from there. Like these are the ones who could at least write a sentence. Right, Some right. of the so so after he released those pictures, then people were like, "Oh, I okay, don't, don't know, yeah, sack them, yeah, yeah. sack them." In fact, sack them. <laughs> but how is that possible? That like, the people go train for like go to you training go to a college. teacher. We yes, assume yes, you went to yes. a teacher and training you college. Can't, you can't do that. It's, they can't. They can't it's read, write, yeah? or spell. You know. But then these are the people who are teaching our children, and our exactly. children are not really you know. And up we to wonder the standard. why. Mm-hmm. Oh, how come the kids can't, can't read? read. Because yes, the teacher yes. can't read. This happened to um, a, um, a relative of mine. Uh, her son went to school he did some homework and a lot of the things were wrong mm. and they marked everything correct <laughs> and I was a bit like these why? things yeah. are wrong why are, you, why are you marking them correct it shows the child that he's not doing anything wrong mm. I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of rampant as well it's so that's it's, not even the last part of the what, oh, the, what, oh. what the F when it comes to this story <laughs> So the final <clears throat> so as I was reading up on it last night I, I saw that the Southern Kaduna Christian Council mm-hmm. has made an appeal to the governor to not sack the teachers you see because it will cause hardship in their life and, and be, as a humane act. And I'm like, do you see this kind of... Do, you, you see. You see how we wallow in mediocrity in mm. Africa. The people are not qualified. They shouldn't be there. Why are you going to beg on their behalf? Christian council. Go Why? and sit down somewhere. You see, I feel like as we go along, people will think we're heathens. I'm not at all. <laughs> like, I feel like we're we not heathens. keep That's not singling true. out. But honestly, if I'm being 100% honest, Christianity is a source of a lot of the issues mm. we have here. Let's just be, let's keep it a hundred. Because people somehow aren't doing this the right people way. People are not thinking. People How are, are you thinking. talking about it's inhumane and they won't have jobs and they'll it'll create hardship? So is it is it humane to have an illiterate teacher teaching mm-hmm. a child? What is that kid's chance in life going to yeah. be like? You send what your, about that? You send your kids to school, you pay school fees, and then they come out with, with nothing? Is that more humane? Hmm. Christian council, my tush, sit down somewhere. They will go. Mm-hmm. And so I was just thinking, I wonder what would happen if we did that in Ghana. We probably would not like the results. Uh? Oh, some no, of these either. schools, mm. something, something, number two, and what, what, what. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm sure it's a horror story in there, too. We probably should do that. I was going to say, maybe we should do yeah. that. Like, evaluate all these teachers, make sure they're GS, doing the right Ghana thing. education, so we need some of these standardized tests to go down here as well, because i yep. Even sure. just the basics. Let's see whether they, they've got the basics mm-hmm. down, you know? You know? It's, 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 it's Anyways, difficult. so that's my <laughs> what the F is Oh, you. man. Oh. So, there's always so much in the news. Yeah. Right. Okay, so going on to two pesos. Dun, dun, dun. So my two pesos for this week is doing it and doing it well. Uh-oh, doing it and doing it and doing it. <laughs> Please don't start getting any funny, funny ideas about what I'm going to talk about. This is a PG, PG, PG show. Well, kind of. Anyway, so my two pesos about doing it and doing it well is really, if you want to be taken seriously at anything and if you want to develop as a person, whatever you do, just make sure you, you do, do, it, it well. do it well. Exactly. So the first point is on speaking. A lot of the times when uh, we hear people speaking, they speak English or, or even whatever language. Let's say Ghana, for, uh, for instance. People speak English, they don't speak it well. And then when you go complain, they say, ah, but it's not my language. Why mm. should I speak it? That, that is an excuse. What, yeah, English is not our, let's say, our indigenous language. But it's a language that we have to work with. So if you're learning it, just learn it well. Also, it is our official language and has been since. Exactly. So it's your excuse is kind exactly. of. Exactly. I actually was going to do a whole two passwords on that language yeah. snobbery mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I think I still will because it's yeah. it's yeah so please if you're speaking it speak it well the same way if you're learning any other language whether it's a local language tree or ever or French or German or whatever you are, you're going to make an attempt to speak it well so if you are just do it and do it well mm. so writing I have a problem and will forever have a problem with those of you who use am Instead of mm. I apostrophe I'm. <laughs> Please, they are not the same thing. They are not this. Don't use am when you mean I apostrophe am. It's not right. It's it's wrong. It's just wrong. And do also, that. we didn't used to do that. So yeah, how can we be? From? How can we be regressing? Like, where did it come from? Or your when you mean you are. Come 
for yes. it's basic, basic English that you would have been taught in class three or class. And you say grammar Nazi, but this yeah, is but not. No. This is, as they say, that's how we understand what's in your head. Exactly. Words matter. I say they this all the matter. time. They have very specific uses and they mean very specific things, things. Yeah. and are not as interchangeable as you would think. That's a completely <laughs> different. Yeah. Thing. I mean, There's, I mean, I could go through a whole list of things that people say wrong, but then I'll be like, mm, she's too known. No, just do it right. Do it right. Don't say I'm. Um. If you're talking to me, you say, um, I'll, I'll come for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, the next bit is work. When you've been given an assignment to do, don't go rush to the assignment and be like, oh, yeah, I'm the first. Do it and do it well. I don't think ever, anyone has ever been commended for doing something fast and, and well. Right. Exactly. You, you'll be commended for doing the work properly. So, when you're doing it there as well, just do it well. In love and relationships. Ooh. <laughs> so it's the same thing. If you love, if you're in love with somebody, you can't love your partner halfway and then expect them to give you a hundred percent. It doesn't work that way. If you're not willing to give a hundred percent, they aren't either. They aren't either, and you don't. Get, and then you don't start getting annoyed or having a grudge because they are not giving you what you are not giving them. So in the same way, love wholeheartedly. Otherwise, it won't work. So just generally, I'm saying that in whatever you're doing, just do it and do it well. You grow as a person, you develop as a person, and the other and other people around you will will feel that too. That's, so that's my two passwords. That's excellent. Actually. Oh, thank you. Excellent guys. advice. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going into the gutter with my two passwords. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> as usual, I like it. Yeah. Um, my two passwords is on addressing the other woman. Mm. Yes, girl. Mm. Let's get into this real mm. quick. So, now this has I've, I've seen this occur over time. Okay, mm. where you have you hear stories that some woman came to Lego on campus and mm. came to beat up some small mm. girl and mm. you know or whatever it is, put them on blast online right. or whatever the case may be. Right. And I've always wondered what exactly is the logic in that. You know, I mean, no, let, let me, let me be clear. I, I before you come for me, right. okay, I get it. I mean, obviously you're upset that, you know, usually, and we're talking, let's, let's talk marriage. Cause mm -hmm. that's, that's the big one, right. you know, boyfriend, that's horrible. But mm -hmm. wife, if you're married and you we're talking about cheating spouse, let, yeah. let's, let's start there. Let's just go to the apex of this thing. So, you know, some madame came and came to beat up some small girl mm -hmm. or, you know, is on Facebook. I, I remember the, I was on Facebook the other day right. and some woman, she came and she posted the picture of this side chick and she was mm -hmm. like, this is whatever, whatever. She likes dating married men oh whilst their wives are at home six months pregnant oh, Lord. and blah, blah on and on and on mm -hmm. and posted multiple pictures oh. of the girl. And then so, so somebody in the comments was like, so as you're doing all this, have you similarly put your husband on blast exactly. or are you, is this all? Exactly. And she's like, so she came back. She's like, yes, what he did was wrong, but, but and I'm mm -hmm. like, but what honey? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me, let me say this here right now. And I'm not here to be a spokesperson for side chicks everywhere. Okay. <laughs> no thought, thoughting for dead. All right. Mm -hmm. Don't be out here thoughting and bopping with people's <laughs> spouses. Yep. Okay. But my point is, if I'm the wife, hmm. the only person who I took vows with is my, my husband. husband. Yeah. The only person who the onus of respecting the relationship or my marriage is, is on my husband. husband. He's yeah. the one that's actually married. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's all think about this carefully. Typically, mm -hmm. you're sitting somewhere minding your own business and some man, well, that's how it usually goes with yeah. me. Some man rolls up on me. Mm -hmm. Okay. As I'm just minding my business. business yeah. And then after a, a brief exchange, either you see a ring mm -hmm. or you something, something, and you find out that they're married, married and yeah. you're like, ah, but you're married. And they're like, ah, but that's, that's not mean, your problem. Exactly. Okay. So this is how those kind of interactions usually go down. Mm -hmm. And at that point you can decide to like, be like, all right, if you don't care, I don't, I don't care. care. Exactly. Or you can be like, no, go home. You're disgusting, which is mm -hmm. usually what it is. Cause like that's disgusting. Yep. Okay. So in this scenario who is i mean i feel like if there's anyone going to be beaten up or disgraced or whatever go and beat up it your husband. husband yeah honestly Lord don't knows what he's been saying exactly don't yep. be out here chasing is it because and usually what happens is they don't actually confront their spouses they either. don't yeah that's the thing you, you know? go home and maybe you like i'm not talking to you or you decide you won't cook for him for mm. two weeks and that's about it yeah 
And then so, he may figure out, oh, there's something going on or something, or he might not. Or he might not, or he knows and he doesn't care, or whatever yeah, it yeah. is. So if you're not going to, like, either leave your cheating husband or mm. whatever, and people tend to do this, like, they're known for... Hey, Charlie, this woman, if you mess with her, I mean, she'll come and yeah. confront you or yes. come and yes. knock yes. pants and call you and I shout. I'm like, exactly. look, if you're not going to leave your husband, if you're not going to confront his ass, if you're not going to throw him out or whatever it is, then might as well leave the side chick alone. Because mm-hmm. honestly, you're just embarrassing yourself. Mm-hmm. You look mm-hmm. lame. It looks like, okay, you know you can't say any of this to, to your, your husband. husband. Yeah. So it's my doorstep you want to come and do all this, yep. these shenanigans on. And you'll not be welcome. Like, honestly, if anyone steps to me like that, I might have to go back to my JSS SS, <laughs> SS version of myself. Don't, <laughs> don't let your wife roll up on me. Like, and usually, and of course, I wouldn't, I this i would not have done anything inappropriate uh-uh. nope. but so i do have a story <laughs> Tell ah! <me. laughs> i've been confronted by somebody once okay Ooh. yes and i was innocent okay so this is like i was in college then university and i was doing my study abroad mm. in um, france right. and i was walking home one day and it was very very late and the buses you know only come every 45 minutes at that point or whatever so i was like instead of standing at this bus stop for 45 minutes in the dark i'm just gonna start walking towards mm-hmm. campus and yeah. then when i catch a bus i'll catch one right so i was walking walking and then i wasn't seeing a bus and i was just mm. like eh? <laughs> and then this car rolled up and slows down like he starts like you know mm. driving at the speed at which i'm walking right and he's like you need it's not safe i'll get you're going to campus right mm-hmm. you look like you're a student come i'll, I'll give you a ride mm-hmm. and i'm just like ah, stranger danger you know? <laughs> and i was just like no i don't know it's fine and he's like look i'm not a rapist i'm not a i'm not gonna do anything i promise like it's really not safe for you to be right. walking up by yourself mm-hmm. in the at late it's late it's late so in the end I texted my friend. I was like, this is the license plate number. (laughs) If you don't hear from me in 15 minutes, call the police. Okay. So I get in with him. He took me to campus and everything. And he's like, oh, can I have your number or whatever? And he says, mind you, he was really, really fine. (laughs) He was, he was. He was from like Morocco or Algeria or something. Gorgeous. Had green up. Uh, Gorgeous. (laughs) Anyway. So he came over once after that, twice. The second time he was there. Someone called my phone asking for him. I can't remember what his name was. It was Ahmed or something. And I'm just like, what? And then he's all mouthing, say I'm not here. And I was like, oh, he's not here. He left. Then I was like, wait, who the hell is that? And how do they have my number? And he said some, something really flimsy, like, oh, it's some ex of his who we saw the other day and she went through his phone. I'm just like, mm, mm. So I was like, yeah, okay. Anyway, as you like. So then he left. And, um... Then I'm sitting, minding my business the next day, and I get this phone call from this lady, um, the same person again. Mm-hmm. What is the nature of your relationship with Ahmed? I'm like, uh, what? We're just friends. I just met him the other day. Mm-hmm. And she's like, do you know he's married? And I was like, oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Actually, no. She's like, yes, he's married, and we have a child together who is two. And oh, I was like, Lord. okay, sis. Like, mm-hmm. And then she's like, so what did you do? I was like, look. So I told her everything. Mm-hmm. I was like, this was all like, you know, last week. I don't know him. I don't know anything about it. Nothing has happened. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Just. And then she starts crying. Like, what should I do? I was like, what? <laughs> she's like I'm like, what? You, what? She's like, what should I do? I don't know how <laughs> he's been doing this. And I'm like, oh. why are you telling me? I was like, first of all, I, you need to talk to your husband. Yeah. Okay. And then she was like, he's. She tried to talk to him and he's been aggressive and violent with her. And then I'm like, honey, can you talk to your friends or family? Like, you can't talk to me about yeah, this. I don't, you, don't, you, know, you don't know her from anywhere. I don't know you. Yeah. I'm sorry that this is happening to you. I was like, do not call my phone again, please. Mm-hmm. And she called me a couple of times after that and I didn't pick up. Whoa. But I'm like, the point is, deal with it with your spouse first yeah. don't bring it to like mm-hmm. i'm sorry like because I, as long as, 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 as far as you're concerned you've not done anything i really haven't done anything and typically most women i mean that's the thing they, though. maybe they cross the line at some point huh. but initially usually they're there and they get approached by mm-hmm. your husband mm-hmm. who doesn't respect the fact that mm-hmm. he's married so if you want to deal with someone deal with him, him exactly. first of all exactly. and primarily and maybe even only mm-hmm. all this leave my husband alone um Tell your husband to leave me alone. How about that? 
Anyway, so yeah. that's my two pesos on approaching right. the other woman. Don't right. do it. It's not worth it. Yes, she might be a thought for like noticing he's married and still going ahead, but yeah, he yeah, is yeah. the bigger thought for being married and, and pursuing after, people yeah. in the first place. Exactly. Alrighty. Exactly. Right, that was oh. good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So that's it. That's it. All right. So thanks for listening Thank as you always. Guys. And you know, I really, I'm going to emphasize this: like, follow, if you share, again and again until yes. you, because we really need to. Like, your likes boost up the um, podcast, and it, it increases our chances of getting discovered by new people exactly. and all that. So please, if you enjoy it, just. Whether it's a heart or a star or a thumbs up, just click it and make sure you share with somebody who else else who might enjoy it. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. Didn't we say we're gonna shout out somebody? Yes, oh, ooh, I have a shout out. Yes, this please, week. let's do that. My shout out is to Lebanese hey, because Levin yes, a. she has. <laughs> I mean, she's almost more enthusiastic about this show than I am, oh, and she does lovely. that for everything I do. Oh, like brilliant. she's always there, pushing me, encouraging me to try oh. stuff. I mean, she's and like she. Look, she. The minute I hit publish, she's listened to it, oh, and I, I love you, Les. We love Thank you, you. Love Thank you so much, <laughs> and so many other people. Like yeah. so, I, your messages and everything. Like I have warned my. You know it. I tell you all. Yeah. I mean it. You really make it worthwhile. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. All right. Till next time. Till next time. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed the episode and you're listening to us on any of our platforms, please give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and we'd also love for you to share this episode with your friends. Let's continue the conversation. We'd like to hear your feedback. Information on how to reach us on our website can be found in the description.